right, you guys, it's been a while, but in this video, we're going to be modifying the Predator powered mini bike, putting a stage two kit in it, hopping it up a little bit. So stick around, enjoy the video. All right, before we get started here, I'll go over a few parts I ordered for this thing. I ordered a stage two kit like a year ago or almost a year ago, and it went on the back burner on a shelf. And uh, mysteriously, the head gasket and the side cover gasket is gone, missing in action. So who knows what happened with that? Everything's been in the box the whole time. So something happened but anyways I got 18 pound valve uh, springs a decent looking spark plug billet flywheel billet ARC connecting rod with bearings I will put the specs on this cam because I can't remember what I ordered but I'll put it over here and we got an XR200 knockoff carb we're gonna put on here got some tubing for intake manifold and for the transmission the CVT it's a buttery yellow looking spring I remember about a year ago I did the specs and figured out what I had here. I'll put some specs on these parts on the side as well. That's a driven spring and some white garter springs for the front variator. So we're getting installing these things, we're gonna yank out the motor next and start putting all these parts in. This part right here, I replaced and modified myself. I found that a one inch piece of copper tubing for water line works really well. The original bushing that came on here is a little bronze bushing and it wore out within a few weeks. Bought another 10 or $15 one. It wore out again and I said, hell with it, I'm not buying those things anymore. So this thing's been on here for almost a year now without any problems. Plus you can get them at Home Depot. Like I think Home Depot, you can buy 10 foot sticks. You're never gonna need that much, but Works pretty well. I pull it apart once in a while and put a little lubrication on it so it doesn't wear out, but works pretty good. So here's pretty much the modified frame on the XR100, how to mount a Predator engine in it. This is really simple to modify on almost any broken down bike. For you guys that don't know the backstory on this and why I had this rolling chassis around here without an engine, I'll put a little link to the original video of how to install this engine in this mini bike right over here. You can take any broken down motorbike and pretty much fit one of these CV transmissions with a $100 motor in it. Really simple, this cost me about 160, 170 bucks to do. Gets kids back on mini bikes again. And uh, this thing went from a 100cc engine originally that was gone out of it to a 212 so it has some ponies behind it. All right you guys let's get back to uh, tearing apart this engine. If you're enjoying the video so far, please consider subscribing, giving a thumbs up, and uh, leave a comment. Thumbs up in the comment. Louder? Thumbs up in the comment! <laughs> All right, we got the block stripped completely down. Time to put on the high performance parts. Let's get to it.
Alright, next up, we're gonna be mounting a carburetor right up here. This is a Honda XR200 knockoff carb. This is the original runner I built just for the air filter. We may use that and modify it. If not, I don't have a tubing bender yet, so I ordered this little section of tubing off of um, Amazon for pretty cheap. Usually I'd be going over to my CNC and cutting some flanges for this thing for the intake, but uh, a few years back when I mounted one of these carbs on my quad truck, my buddy cut all the flanges before I owned my CNC table, and he cut me some extras. So I have these, so I'm going to work with these, save myself some time. Alright, let's get building this. Alright you guys, got it all put together here, I took it for a few little test runs. I kind of ballparked the jetty and it's pretty good, I think I can fine tune it a little bit more. So you guys might notice I spruced it up a little bit, I bought a seat cover and installed it the other night for this thing. Intake manifold's working out really well, I like the placement of the carb, everything like that. There's going to be some guys that are going to gripe and say it's too long. 
I'm not gonna buy into any of that things. It works fine for my application. And if you think it's too long, look at Ford Taurus SHO uh, engines from the mid 90s. They got like a spaghetti network of intake manifolds. So this is totally fine. We're gonna fire this thing up and cruise it around a little bit. I figured I should probably mention a little shout out to my sponsors for hooking me up with all these parts. That's me, myself, and I. I actually called a pretty common parts house that actually supplies a lot of go-kart builds on YouTube with uh, free parts or heavily discounted parts and told them about my YouTube channel and they gave me absolutely zero discount. It uh, paid 100% out of pocket for them, so I'm definitely not going to throw any words of any uh, sponsorships out there because I didn't get any for them, but that's all right. Still a fun project and I don't mind paying out of pocket for it. Alright you guys, thanks so much for sticking around and checking out my video. For some of you that don't know about the quad truck, this also runs a Predator style 6.5 horsepower engine. I built this thing from an old broken down quad. Put a little link to a video up here for the build series. This engine over here puts out way more power than it did before. Revs are much higher. Like before with the stock engine, it would be fine to put a kit on it that fits the size bike. But I don't think these modifications are necessary for any kid. It just definitely puts out too much power I think for any small, small child. But anyways, it's ripping pretty well, much higher RPMs. The things I don't like about it right now and I have to fine tune is the actual clutch engagement. I put those different springs on there so it's to engage at 3,100 RPMs. Sometimes it does, sometimes it engages at 4,500 RPMs. Large gap in, in engagement speed. I'm gonna try changing the belt out and see if that helps it. If not, I'm going back to the stock springs because it is so unpredictable for wheeling. And when you get going on a wheelie, you think it's gonna engage at 31 and it revs out to 45 and you basically almost loop out. So it's kind of sketchy right now and I don't like it's just too variable. You can rev it out much higher like you're popping the clutch, but it's too unpredictable. So we're gonna address that. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing because the next video I post about this machine is strictly gonna be just riding it and trail riding and having fun with the machine. So stick around and check that video out when it comes out and uh, take a look at some of my other videos on my channel. Till next time guys, thanks for watching. Bye.